we begin, take a moment and think about what the most iconic Xbox franchises are. You probably thought of Halo as the first one, and for good reason. But outside of Halo, the most memorable Xbox franchise is arguably this one. Gears of War was the first truly big game for the Xbox 360, and the franchise has grown hand-in-hand -hand with Microsoft's consoles in the years since. Its cover-based gameplay has influenced third-person shooters the world over, and it's spawned spin-offs that have grown beyond its roots. Today on Game Files, let's take a look back on the history of Gears of War. It's the early 2000s, and Epic Games is best known for two things the Unreal Game Engine, and the Unreal Tournament series of first-person shooters. Gears of War was originally conceived as an Unreal Tournament spin-off called Unreal Warfare, which would be a class-based multiplayer shooter with pilotable mechs. However, the continued success of the main Unreal series put this idea on the back burner. When Gears was revived a few years later, the changing industry focus on single-player games caused the game to change accordingly. The lead developer on the project was Cliff Blazinski who cited three games that influenced the direction of Gears of War. The first was Resident Evil 4. Due to its over-the-shoulder third-person camera angle, which proved to be very influential in the industry at large. Namco USA's Kill Switch was another major influence due to its innovative tactical cover system. Lastly, Blazinski cited Bionic Commando Swinging as a point of inspiration, as he wanted the cover system to be just as simple and mobile as that game's platforming. In early 2005, with development on the Xbox 360 exclusive in full swing, Epic Games hired Rod Ferguson. After a positive behind-the-scenes showcase at that year's Game Developers Conference, Microsoft ended up doubling the amount of memory in their upcoming console to take advantage of newer technology. This would cost Microsoft tens of millions of dollars and led to console shortages for a time, but the decision would soon bear fruit. While it couldn't make the Xbox 360's launch, Gears of War would benefit from the fact that the other big Xbox exclusive, Halo 3, was delayed to 2007. And with players wanting a high-quality multiplayer shooter to play, it didn't take much to push Gears of War hype to the stratosphere. The memorable commercial also didn't hurt. It's hard to tell you, I find it hard to take When people run in circles, it's a very, very Launching in November 2006, Gears of War received massive critical acclaim and became the best-selling game of that year. Focusing on the gruff Marcus Phoenix and Delta Squad as they battled the underground locusts in a broken world, Gears of War marked the start of a new franchise that both Microsoft and Epic were eager to build upon. And you know what that means? Sequel time! In your heart, you know it to be true. The commercial may not have been as memorable as the first Gears of War, but its sequel still hit all the right notes. Gears of War 2 featured numerous incremental changes that built and expanded upon the original's gameplay. But its biggest improvement lay in its story, which was much more personal in scale while remaining epic in scope. And like its predecessor, it swiftly became a bestseller. It really shouldn't come as a surprise then when a conclusion to the trilogy was made. Cue the melodramatic trailer. With this, Epic had overseen the creation of one of the most successful franchises on the Xbox 360. However, the release of Gears of War 3 marked a turning point in the series. Lead designer Cliff Blazinski would soon leave Epic Games to form his own company. At the same time, Microsoft wanted a bigger piece of the Gears of War pie, leading to a major change. The last Gears of War game Epic developed, this time alongside People Can Fly, was the spin-off Gears of War Judgment. It was a Gears of War game through and through, to the point that many felt it lacked innovation. To date, it is the worst-selling game in the franchise. In 2014, Microsoft purchased all the rights to Gears of War from Epic Games, handing off development to newly reorganized studio, The Coalition, to lead development on a new trilogy. It wasn't full of entirely new faces, however, Rod Ferguson joined the studio to lead development on Gears of War 4. Moving past the quality of the campaign and writing, Gears 4 is a fantastic action game that was as successful as a game can be for the Xbox One. As one would expect, a new Gears game was announced a couple of years later. However, in announcing Gears 5, 
Microsoft also announced spin-offs that move the series beyond its third-person shooter roots. The first, which is not a joke despite all appearances, was Gears Pop, a real-time strategy game for mobile devices. The second, and much more appealing game in all honesty, was Gears Tactics. It's a turn-based strategy game in the style of XCOM, only with a Gears coat of paint placed over top. While we are still waiting for that last game to release, Gears 5 launched on Xbox One and PC in September 2019, to much acclaim and celebration. It's the first Gears game with a female protagonist and the first to feature a semi-open world to explore. Gears 5 was the most successful Microsoft launch since Halo 4, meaning that we should explore another game to complete the trilogy sometime soon. And who are we kidding? We want to see more Gears of War. Despite the oft-repeated complaints about its lack of innovation, there's nothing else that scratches the itch for third-person shooters quite like Gears does. We can only hope that the franchise will slowly grow while keeping its core identity in the years to come.